I gotta get you guys out, okay? After a party turns foul. I heard two cracks on both sides of me. A party goer cries foul as well. Attorneys say their client needs help paying his medical expenses and it's homeowners who should foot the bill. They shouldn't have had so many people in their house at one time partying. Aurora addresses a critical backlog of police records. It is possible some crimes may not have been investigated for three months or for several months. Former Douglas County Superintendent Corey Wise tells Denver 7 about why he's pushing back. I have a duty and I have a job and I have a responsibility and it's what's right. And fast food companies are forcing workers to sign no compete contracts. Colorado lawmakers think it's time to renegotiate. Don't prohibit someone from making a living for two or three years. That's to me that's un-American. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. There's a thin line between a story you tell forever and one that follows you forever. And the hundred or so people involved in a raucous house party in Aurora fall into the latter category. And not just the ones who were hurt when the floor gave way, but the people who own the home and who may now be held accountable. Denver 7's Brian Wang explains. Some described it as the birthday party of the year. A rager, a banger, an all-out bash. I think it started getting really out of hand really, really quick and just too quick for anyone to really notice or care too much. Quite the fun <laughs> until it wasn't. The floor collapsed in this party and a bunch of juveniles stuck downstairs. The living room dance floor collapsing into the basement. We've got reports of uh, five unconscious parties uh, still in the basement. Hey, you see anyone under here? Authorities say up to 200 people attended the party, but shockingly, there was only one serious injury, and that was 19-year-old Grayson West. I felt myself go down. I went into shock for a few seconds, and my hearing just kind of went out. An excruciating pain would shoot its way past all the adrenaline. I looked around, turned and looked at my foot, and it was all bent up and everything, and kind of looked like a question mark. Doctors say West fractured and dislocated his foot in multiple places. There are certain things that I'm not going to be able to do that I used to love to do. According to West's hey, attorney, you know, Grayson's going to need hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical bills. And that's why they're going after the homeowner's insurance. According to the Arapaho Sheriff's Office, both homeowners were at the home during the party. In any liability claim situation or even a lawsuit, they're going to do an investigation. Carol Walker is the executive director at Rocky Mountain Insurance Association. She says insurance companies will consider multiple yeah. factors in a liability investigation before paying on a claim. What was the homeowner's responsibility? Were they negligent? Were they taking every step, every precaution they could to ensure the safety of their guests. And if it's determined the homeowners are responsible, insurance can deny paying out a claim, leaving the financial burden on the homeowner. Anytime you have people on your property, especially if you're hosting a party and there's alcohol being served, you do have a certain amount of legal liability. Quite the party. I wasn't there for more than 40 minutes before the floor collapsed. Okay, so the main floor collapsed completely. And possibly quite the liability. Bayon Wang, Denver 7. Eight homes have been evacuated in Woodland Park over a wildfire. Right now, this Teller County fire is small, only a few acres. It is already 10% contained. Greeley police have arrested a Weld County deputy on suspicious of stalking and domestic violence. The sheriff's office learned of a protection order against John Medell Friday. They called Greeley police, who started the investigation Monday and made the arrest today. Online marketplace Let Go is being sued by the family of a couple shot and killed in Aurora while trying to buy a car. Joe and Jocelyn Rowland showed up to a parking lot in August of 2020 to check out a RAV4 for their daughter. Police say they had actually been lured there by a then 18-year-old man named Kyrie Brown, who allegedly killed and robbed them. Brown is to be tried in August. Now, let go. The company is being sued on grounds that it failed to verify whether Brown was a legitimate seller. The company has since been acquired by OfferUp. The group that uncovered a critical backlog of unprocessed police reports in Aurora says progress is being made. PRI and management initially found more than 2,500 reports concerning Everything from murder to carjacking still in the queue, still waiting to be cleared. Well, tonight, Aurora is down to a little more than 400 reports. As for what this backlog says about Aurora crime or the department charged with addressing it, PRA had this to say. We did not state that as a result of the backlogs in the record section, criminals are out running free. PRI did not state that all of the backlog cases were not being investigated. What we did say, and I quote the report, Quote, as a result of the delays in processing police reports, 
Violent crimes reported to the police department may not, and I emphasize, may not be investigated for months, enabling suspects who might, and I emphasize might, otherwise have been investigated and taken into custody to reoffend. PRI found a number of factors contributing to this backlog. Notably, Aurora did not seem to be documenting what employees working from home were actually doing. A Wheat Ridge police officer who was stabbed several times while responding to a traffic call was released from the hospital today. Alan Fisher, a 20 year veteran of the department. Police say he lost so much blood he might have died if not for the actions of his fellow officers. And the person accused of stabbing him has been arrested. Right now, the State Board of Education is considering how to best place the Adams 14 school district in a position to succeed. The most severe option on the table, closing Adams City High School or reorganization and neither appears to have broad support. A partial partnership with a firm chosen by the district appears to be the more palatable option to the board, if not parents. I think we need local control, first of all, okay? Uh, we also need um, a panel and a board that reflects the community, especially, uh, because we clearly see that this state board doesn't reflect our community, and many of the communities that they are sabotaging and jeopardizing throughout, which are all low, low income, black and brown communities throughout the state. Now, Adams 14 will address today's hearing at a news conference that's set for 7 p.m. tonight, and you can stream that on Denver 7 Plus, or you can also get the highlights on Denver 7 News at 10. Former Douglas County School Superintendent Corey Wise filed a charge with the EEOC, claiming he was unlawfully fired. And today, I met with Wise for his first interview since his very public, emotionally charged dismissal in February by the newly elected conservative school board majority. Now, Wise says he was fired because he supported the school district's in-school mask mandate and equity policy. That newly elected majority opposed both and have since gotten rid of both. Wise's attorneys say they are prepared to take this to trial, and while they don't have a monetary amount in mind, they say compensation to make up for the unfulfilled two years of his contract, benefits and damages could be in the seven figures. Wise himself says he wants justice. I want what's right. I, I think when things are violated, it needs to be improved, and that, that accountability side. If you knew then what you know now, um, would you have done anything differently? No. Wise right now working as the community superintendent for Jeffco schools through the end of the semester. And then after that, he told me he has just been hired as interim assistant superintendent for Cherry Creek schools. We have reached out to Douglas County schools for a reaction to this complaint and we have not yet heard back. The city of Denver officially broke ground on a redesign of the 16th Street Mall today. This project will eliminate the median that runs between the bus lanes, which will create wider walkways for pedestrians. Trees will be added for shade and infrastructure will be upgraded. The 16th Street Mall is an international icon. It's a destination. It's a signature of Denver. And as the mayor said, great cities never stand still. Great cities think big. They think future forward, and that's why this project is so important. And this is the mall's first major renovation in 40 years. Work should wrap up by the end of 2024, and since the city is doing this piece by piece, businesses will be able to stay open. Colorado received nearly $66 billion in federal pandemic assistance, and of that, 44 cents on the dollar went to support Denver, Arapaho, and El Paso counties. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Our partners at the Denver Post have done their legwork on how this historic aid package was spent. And they're releasing a number of articles over the next week. Today's covered the broad strokes. Tomorrow's will focus on health care. Sunday's on rural counties. And there's a lot more to come after that. We recommend subscribing and reading. A bill that would phase out sales of products that contain so-called forever chemicals was heard in a Colorado House committee today, and those chemicals are often linked to firefighting foam, but they're also commonly used in food containers, carpets, and furniture. They can stay in the ground and water for a long time and have been tied to an increased risk of cancer among firefighters. And changes could be coming to hiring practices in Colorado. If not through the legislature, then through federal courts. Here's Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez. 
There's a case playing out in federal court in Colorado, a case about a dialysis company named DeVita and its former CEO allegedly conspiring with other companies, a case that could set precedent for Colorado employment law. While that jury deliberates the merits of the DeVita case in federal court dealing with non-solicitation, Colorado lawmakers are considering a bill to change non-competes. Now, non-solicitation means companies won't actively go after one another's employees or their customers. Non-competes, on the other hand, are agreements that employees simply can't go work for a similar company for a certain amount of time. Non-competes stifle innovation. They make it difficult for employers to recruit talent, and they make it difficult for talent to go places and move up the ladder. House Bill 1317 would do away with non-competes for people making less than $101,000 per year. Bill sponsor Carrie Tipper says for some high-level positions, non-competes make sense to protect proprietary information. Take the case of Jimmy John's, which was barring its employees from working at other sandwich shops or delis for two years if they left. Don't prohibit someone from making a living for two or three years. That's, to me, that's un-American. That case settled in 2016, but David Seligman from Torts Justice says other businesses like coffee shops, pools, childcare, even tourism jobs have done something similar. We see workers with non-compete agreements um, disproportionately likely to be paid lower wages than they should be otherwise. And he says this bill will give important powers back to employees. That is critical to worker bargaining power and, and critical to ensuring that, that you get paid for the value of your labor. On the House floor. And two years is not that long. Opponents argue this bill will hurt businesses. The last thing a business wants is for somebody of any age to come in and learn the things that you do that give you a competitive edge in business and then walk out and take all that knowledge with them elsewhere, though there are trade secret laws in place. For now, the bill lives on and could change Colorado employment law moving forward if it's passed. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. Winds are still whipping out there. I do have some calmer conditions coming up in the seven day. Plus, the question Nuggets and Warriors fans alike want an answer to. When will we see Steph?